Welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider 2, this is Algaris 115. Yay! Now, <laughs> as soon as you take a few steps forward, you get this really impressive view of the helicopter Lara arrived on. Kind of makes you wonder how she uh, entered the Great Wall of China without the Chinese government knowing about it. But there you have it. Anyway, I went through quite a few technical difficulties till I actually got around to do this. Till I got the widescreen patch working and fixed the issues uh, with sound loops and music not working, etc. I'm not gonna get into too much details right now, let's focus on Lars for adventure. So basically, uh, as soon as we enter, we get this lovely orange tiger here. The color is very aggressive. It used to scare me a lot when I was younger. Um, so you can basically take the route through the water, you can just do this and keep Lara's feet dry, which is what I prefer to do. And yeah, basically I talked about her updated looks uh, in Lara's home level, but she also has a different voice, if you have noticed, different voice acting. So you can look forward to new grunts while she's jumping or moving blocks or climbing, that sort of thing. And each time we pick something up, we can hear her saying, aha. Uh -huh. And what we actually picked up was the secret. Yeah. In this game, you don't find secrets. You find them and you pick them up. So they're not really bound to a specific area that then triggers the secret charm. You instead have to pick up the secret object, which in every single level are these dragon statues, which I think is really lovely. Now, as soon as you pick it up, this tiger appears down there, but being down there he's no threat, but we just want to rack up the kill count as much as we can. So basically, about the secrets in this game, there are going to be three secrets in every single level. There's going to be a stone or silver dragon. Uh, not sure which one it's supposed to be, but I think it's stone, because then there's a jade dragon and finally a golden dragon. And, you know, usually silver and gold are next to each other, whereas in this case there's a jade dragon between them, so I kind of think it's just a stone dragon. Either way, um, you don't get these statues into the inventory itself, you get them in the statistics screen. And yes, finally Lara's useless compass has been uh, replaced by the stopwatch, which constantly keeps ticking, which is really neat, and we get to see the time, it still runs, even if we have the inventory screen on, we can see how many secrets we found out of three, we can see the number of kills, the ammunition used and how many hits were actually how much of the ammunition actually hit our target also the health bags used and distance traveled so yeah some of this is information is new even the ammunition used and this will allow me later on to see 
how many shots we fired using the pistols, which is something I couldn't do in the first game. Now, okay, as soon as you enter here, there's just a little trapdoor, which will take you, well, down, but that's where we need to go. And, yeah, now, we're actually inside of a guard, well, a watchtower on top of the Great Wall of China. Still makes me wonder how the hell Lara managed to get here without the authorities noticing. But, um, what we have to do is just make a running jump with a grab and uh, open the door out. Yeah. And basically, these are in game cutscenes. We're going to be seeing plenty of them in the game, and they can all be skipped by pressing the view button. Even this camera look can be skipped by drawing your weapons or pressing the look button. If you feel like you're in danger and you need to take control of Lara immediately, it's very handy to do. Okay, so we got three eagles in here. And... Okay, these guys can actually take quite a beating from the distance. The general rule is that the closer you are to your enemies, the more damage you deal with any weapon, really. Especially that's the case for shotgun, which, oh, by the way, we started the level with. It's loaded with two shots, so basically one ammunition pack. Then we got two flares and one large and one small health pack, which, well, to be honest, is still more than we started the first game with. It was just pistols and a compass. No. And each time you press control next to a keyhole, no. Lara says no. And this means we don't really have a key item to insert in. And yeah, just like in the first game, game once we'll find our key items, uh, we'll find them in the upper inventory ring. Just like this, basically. Now, that's the first key of the game, and it's a guardhouse key. I love how Lara can just identify where the key fits, just looking at it. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Okay, now, as soon as we leave, there's a nasty tiger in here. And I think the bastard bit us as well. Just take your time with this, you don't want to lose too much health. Or maybe you do, depends on what sort of person you are, and if you love to see Lara suffer. You know, sometimes she deserves that for the stupid thing she does. But anyway, um, now that we have the key and we dispose of the tiger, let's just keep moving forward. And, oh dear, I actually suffer from a mild arachnophobia, so I'm not going to like the next part. Not at all. Okay, now you can see those sort of scribbling noises, that's actually giant spiders moving towards you. And yeah, well, these these spiders are actually really large, but they're still not as large as they're going to be later on in the game. Those things will be in insanely huge, so these small guys, they will pretty much explode when you share them with bullets. It's very satisfying, actually. I prefer to go up here just to safely dispose of that guy over there, but seriously, the damage they do is minimal. The real issue I have with them is just how disgusting they are. And yeah, basically there's a new feature to Tomb Raider 2, I already mentioned that in Lara's home. We get to climb things, and what I did was just a very awkward angle jump where I failed to grab the ladder. But it doesn't matter, we still got up here, and we got our next key, which is basically the rustic key. Um, yeah, so this time Lara can't really tell where the key fits, she just knows she, it's rusty. There's a fascination with rusty keys in Tomb Raider games, isn't there? Besides, I don't see the point of what's lock the point of locking that door and then locking the door over here, but there you have it. Okay. Funny that the rusty key doesn't really even match the lock, the color of the lock. Unlike in let's say the system level in the first game. So we've got three lovely spiders here. And there's one coming from behind. Sneaky bastard. Okay, now, this guy over here dropped shotgun shells and large health bag, and I doubt it was the spiders that killed him, but... Oh well, anything's possible. So yeah, the movable blocks are back in the game. Oh boy. And the grunts that Lara makes are extremely, well, disgusting and disturbing. It's just like... She's in complete and utter agony. It's not very pleasant to listen to. Now, this is something you could swim forward through if you're in a hurry, but if you want to avoid taking damage, which is well, yes, what we want to do, just jump up here and you can sort of shimmy sideways. Yeah. 
Now, mind you, this is the first level of the game. You might expect it to be kind of forgiving and easy, but... Oh boy, that's not the case. Now, you can avoid the greatest dangers, but seeing as we want to explore all of it... <laughs> there's gonna be something really, uh... Really extreme. Forward. And I think I'm also gonna save the game, because... Oh, well, why not? Okay, so, I went all the way here, just so we can swim under these blades. Well, sort of... Circle disc dispensers, or whatever the hell they are. Now, yeah. This is a crumbling floor that we can recognize from the first game. This kind of tells us things are gonna go horribly wrong. So first, let's save the game. Okay. And <laughs> let's try and make it through the gauntlet of traps. So that was crumbling floor, spikes, two boulders, more spikes, and wait for it. That's, that's not all at all. Now, as soon as you enter here, these walls will try to squeeze Lara to death. So what I suggest you do is just get a hold of them and just... Oh boy! Okay, we just lost half of our health because I was too slow. That was because I took too much time adjusting to pick up the ammunition. But you may be wondering what it was. Well, a new object. Automatic pistol clips. Now this is pretty much the equivalent of magnum clips because automatic pistols that we're going to find in the next level are basically magnum pistols. They just have a higher rate of fire, but the damage is actually horrible. Why did the blades... Quickly, Lara, please pick it up. Oh, That was very close. So, yeah. That was the second secret. It's just right there in front of you. The challenge is picking it up before getting crushed by the spiky walls. And you don't see a way out of here, but... Oh! Okay. And then the wall closes up behind us. I'm not sure we can climb. Actually, I'm sure we can't. Yep, just the exact left, so that we can't. But anyway, we made it through the gauntlet, that's good. I'm gonna make Lara pick this up. Oh, just passes her head. Oh, that was very close, I should have waited, but... Well, fortune favors the foolish. Now, this is actually, once again, a new feature, if you didn't watch my uh, Lara's Home playthrough. Uh, this is a zipline. Yeah, these are spiders, obviously, but um, we're gonna leave that alone for a while, purely because we want to find the third secret of the game. Okay, that's actually the fifth spider, I believe, in this room. Now, the secret is, well, the entrance to the secret is over here. It's <laughs> very easy to miss. I mean, why the hell would you even look down into the abyss? It's not very pleasant, but you can see skeletons in there, which kind of suggests that we might get close enough to them, safely, hopefully. So let's just shimmy over here. Oh, and soon I'm going to explain a very new mechanic to you. Um, just, there's just so many things I want to tell you, but yeah, one thing at a time. Okay, so um, this is a new type of kind of supply, a new, new kind of pickup. It's a um, box of flares. As you can see we started with two flares, once we'll pick it up, we have uh, we have eight, so that's six flares for pickup. I don't understand why Lara couldn't start off with six, you know, but whatever. And we're gonna have to descend into the dark hall over there, but if you're not comfortable doing that, what you can do is draw a flare, and then with a the flare hotkey just drop it down like that. And there we go, we know it's safe, it's just a long way down, there are no spikes or anything. So, doing this kind of allows us to move down with greater confidence. And yeah, this is the fast way of descending a ladder. It's basically just releasing the control key and then just pressing it again and again and again. Or you can just do it the very safe way and sort of just keep holding down whilst holding the control key. But seriously, where's the fun in that? Okay. Now, there's something you're probably not expecting unless you're familiar with this game, and that's a Tyrex. Oh dear god, they're so very quick. Oh my goodness. And we got a lovely view of the zipline as well. So I'm just gonna get back at this spot and we'll try to deal with the Tyrex in a more safe and reasonable way. Okay, so let me have another go, and this time we're gonna do it in a less reckless manner, and that is 
as soon as we see the bastard coming towards us okay time to run oh goodness I think I pressed the windows key there oh my god I'm panicking this is bad oh wait okay okay you're not gonna get inside you know that yeah shoot him in the mouth Lara oh my goodness they're just so fast no 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 oh. okay took us ages but he is down and we did not have to use our shotgun ammunition which is great because shotgun is much more handy in situations where you can kill your opponent in one or two shots anything more uh, that's a good time to use it but that's it you don't really expect Tyrexes in China especially outside of areas where Skion keeps things alive so I, I really consider this more of an easter egg from the developers to be honest I still remember the times when I had no idea the secret is even here and my cousins told me about that the same ones that refused to play Tomb Raider 1 after the whole bear in the Peru fiasco and uh, I just didn't believe them. I had an argument with them. And then I went home, I tried it out, and there genuinely was a Tyrex. I felt like the biggest idiot in the entire world. Oh boy, we can hit tigers up top, but we'll deal with them later. What we see here is the third secret, and we got a small health pack, two pairs of grenades, and a grenade launcher loaded with two grenades. So that's a grenade launcher and six grenades. Now, there is a particular reason I'm not fond of this weapon. It's very unwieldy and the main issue I ha have with it is that the kill count in your statistics, it somehow messes it up. It often gives you twice the kill count for a particular enemy when it obliterates them to little pieces. So I'm going to try and refrain from ever using this gun purely because I don't want there to be some sort of mess in the statistics. But once you'll be playing the game, feel free to use it as much as you want great fun to obliterate enemies, to obliterate dogs into small pieces, or even use it on small spiders. It just never gets old. Or blowing up a ty Tyrex, that's always fun. Okay, but let's just... Oh! Okay, now this was worth it, just to see this death animation. Okay, give me another chance. Okay, that's my voice from the darkness. Um, let me have another go at this mean Tyrex over here. Oh boy. Seriously, one is kind of a nasty surprise, but two of them... Oh boy. Well, the good thing is they're not here at the same time. That'd be a complete and utter mess. The problem is he can still very well reach Lara in this tunnel over here. But you know what? For what you did to us last time, I think we're gonna shotgun you. Wait, he died already! H how did that happen? He just... Okay, now this is just bizarre. Anyway, we are alive, and I think we should get our priorities straight, and that's what really matters. Now, um, yeah, so basically, that was the third secret of the level. Every, every single level in the game, except for the last two ones, will um, have three secrets. And, well, with the exception of Lara's Home, but that's not really a level that can be started and finished. So, um, yeah, and each time you pick the third one, whilst having the other two basically once you pick up the last one um, you're gonna get a reward in the form of pickups it is usually a bunch of ammunition or a bunch of health packs or at one point even a bunch of flares all of which are insanely useful especially in the PS1 version where everything is just brutally dark but yeah so basically we're gonna be finding all of these this time around you're also motivated because the rewards are overall greater than those in, in Tomb Raider 1, where there was just a secret area with a couple of pickups, which could be anything from a small health pack to, uh, to a new weapon, really. And yeah, as you can see, you can even receive a whole new weapon, just like we did a grenade launcher this time around. But okay, so that's about it. And we can finally use that zipline in a very, uh, very stylish way. Now, that's the interesting part. When we stepped on this tile, we triggered a music whilst we were killing spiders earlier. But, seeing as we went down and died to the Tyrex, and then I had to reload the game, and I came here all the way back, the same music trigger sort of 
reactivated, so you can keep reactivating these sort of musics as much as you want if you reload the game. And yes, there's a welcome committee over there. I think I'm gonna use shotgun. Okay, but that was a one shot that I don't want to lose again. Just die. Haha, <laughs> so close. Would be a waste to use the sh second shot. Okay, sweet. Alright, I'm not sure if that was the same sound that the shotgun had in the in the first game. But anyway, let's check the statistics. We have all the secrets and we have 23 kills, which is exactly what we're aiming for. Now, I'm going to use this moment to explain another issue that there's going to be throughout the walkthrough. Um, this game, for some unknown reason, nor the third one, they do not keep a track of the items you found, which I personally think is the most important statistic right after the secrets. For whatever reason, they decided not to include that here. So, the only way to really find out how many pickups there are is to open up the Tomb Raider level editor, open up the default levels and start messing in the files and see how many items were actually put into the level. Now, I personally can't use the level editor. It, it, this tech method I used in my Let's Play Painkiller, the Black Edition walkthrough. That's when I use the level editor to open levels up to see how many stuff there actually is. But in the case of Tomb Raider, what I'm going to do is rely on written walkthroughs of other people who did this thing. And I'm going to cross-reference it to the number and types of items I'm going to find myself during my trial runs. And all I can give you is the uh, is my word that once I'll upload the video, it was it already went through me checking if I found every single item during the entirety of the video. So I'm going to go through my own quality check if you want. And once the videos will be uploaded, they're going to be uploaded knowing that all the items are displayed in the video where they can be found. So yeah, that's basically the only way I can do it. And at the end of each level I'm going to tell you the total number of items we found and then I'm going to do final statistics video just like I did for Tomb Raider 1 and the unfinished business. Now what we see here is the same marking as on the door to the temple of Jean, but opening the door, well that's going to be another issue. Actually you can say the entirety of Tomb Raider 2 is about opening that blasted door. And there's a small laptop here, very cute. But we're gonna see more of that in the next cutscene. Oh yeah! Pardon me, if that was just your way of trying the doors for me. <laughs> With a tommy gun on my gearing. Though not anymore. So after you. Somehow. You don't behave like you got the monk's blood. I understand that somehow is in my favor. So indulge me about the dagger. I'd be indebted with your life. These doors are waiting for the right one. The right time to arrive. And then the dagger's blade will honor the hearts of those who believe. So unless you pledge your loyalty as well. And which one is that? To the sin and fortunes of Marco Bartoli. Perhaps not just yet, then. Aha, uh -huh. Gianni Bartelli, Via Caravelli, Venice. Okay, so that took us about 17 minutes, and yeah, that's 23 kills, and there were 14 items, 14 pickups in this particular level. Okay, so I hope you had fun watching this video, and I'm even more looking forward to the next one. I'll see you guys next time in Italy.